Uganda, another landlocked country in East Africa, is about to make a major leap to prosperity in a surprising turn of events that started to take shape a few years ago. Uganda, in the next 24 months, will join the League of Oil exporting countries. Yes, you had me right. However, some investments, logistics, environmental and political challenges must be squarely settled to pave way for the new oil world to be realized. Now, geographically, Uganda is landlocked and is bordered by Kenya in the east, Tanzania in the south, Rwanda in the southwest, Democratic Republic of Congo in the west, and Sudan in the north. So how would a landlocked country like Uganda export crude oil? To export oil internationally, it needs access to the sea, where ocean tankers can bathe. To do that, Uganda needs to send the oil via pipelines to a seaport in either Kenya or Tanzania. But finally, Uganda settled for the Tanga port in Tanzania as her export terminal, and then kicked off a $10 billion oil processing, drilling, prospecting and an almost 1,400 kilometers pipeline project to send the crude to the international market. Once this project was launched, it was like all hell was let loose on Uganda. Criticisms piled from foreign nations, environmental campaigners swarmed Uganda, both local and international. Pressure mounted on investors to withhold finances. But a recalcitrant Ugandan president, Yoweri Museveni, a one time rebel soldier turned politician, said, To hell with all of you, and steamed on with the project. Not a, not a nice language, right? Now, something is about to happen in Uganda after all. I will tell you all about it in this video. Before then, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And before we continue, so now let's begin. Where are the oil fields located in Uganda? How much oil reserve is there? Who are the investors in the project? When will the first oil export happen? What is the progress of work so far? I will also explain what and why the environmental concerns about this project is almost deafening. First, the oil fields in Uganda are located in western Uganda at the moment in an area called Lake Albert region in the middle of the savannah grassland. Unfortunately, one of the world's most famous game reserves, the Murchison Falls National Park, which is home to some of the largest populations of elephants, giraffes, lions, and leopards anywhere on the planet, is also on this spot where the oil is found. The chief warden, Edison Nwamanya, rattles off the numbers by heart. We have 2,700 elephants, 15,800 buffalo, 1,950 Rothschild giraffes, and more than 150,000 cubs, a type of antelope. Decades of hard work and investment have helped to restore these populations after they were decimated by poaching. A key part of it, the Tilenga oil field, which includes 10 well parts and a feeder pipeline inside the national park, bringing industrial activity on a scale the area has never seen before. Are you beginning to see why environmental campaigners are heavily critical of the project? We will soon come back to this. The 10 billion Lake Albert oil project, which includes the Tilenga oil field, Kingfisher oil field, and ECOP pipeline, is run by the French oil company Toto Energies and the usual suspect, Chinese state oil developer CNOOC. And the project has roared into life after a final investment decision was reached some time ago. But who are the other investors? 
While many are worried about the impact it will have on wildlife, the project is set to transform not only the landscape, but also the energy markets of the whole East Africa, producing, listen, 230,000 barrels of oil a day at its peak. Now, when will it come into production? By 2025. Uganda is set to become an energy producer for the first time in Uganda's history, exporting the oil through 1,444 kilometer long heated pipeline that runs through Tanzania. Western Uganda has approximately 6.5 billion barrels of oil reserves, with at least 1.4 1.4 billion estimated to be economically recoverable. Let me start to pose this question even before I conclude. How do you balance the exploitation of these billions of barrels of crude oil with the well being of the wildlife in the park? I have no opinion on this. I would like to hear you in the comments. Now, let's continue. Now that oil drilling has commenced in NS, what is the progress on this very controversial aspect, the East African Crude Oil Pipeline, or the so-called ECOP? Well, the news on our desk is that the development of the most controversial construction project in East Africa, the East African Crude Oil Pipeline, ECOP, is fast becoming a reality. The joint project between Uganda, Tanzania, and foreign investors has received the first 100 kilometer of pipelines as disclosed by the project's coordinator, Mr. Nsovu. This indicates that the project has effectively now officially commenced. The project organizer stated that at least 5,000 pipes are already in place as the large-scale work is about to start. He added that the project is now set to begin its construction phase. The project is still ongoing, and both countries, Uganda and Tanzania, are ensuring that it is carried out as intended. Good news. The recently delivered pipes have a maximum length of 100 kilometers, he said, We have initiated the process of moving them from Dar es Salaam to Tabora, the project center, and from there, they will be distributed to other locations. Mr. Nsovu also mentioned that Tanzania is still pushing the project via the Tanzania Petroleum Development Corporation, which, according to him, issued shares to shareholders, releasing almost 500 billion shillings for the project's execution. The project coordinator also added that the installation of the pipes will kick off in April 2024, and by 2025, it should be completed. What this means is that by 2025, Uganda will be selling oil to the world. A very happy Ugandan government noted that the project is going to serve the good of East Africa's economy. Now, Uganda anticipates significant benefit from its upcoming oil refinery, aiming to boost refining capacity, cut petroleum import, and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. How that will happen is still a wonder to me. President Museveni highlights potential LPG liquefaction liquefied uh, petroleum gas generation for cooking, reducing biomass use. Now, it's becoming clearer. Additionally, the refinery plans to produce feedstock for future fertilizer development, fostering agriculture. As Uganda's oil weight peaks at 6.5 billion barrels, questions arise about revenue distribution, with local governments eager for a share the oil sector could bring, listen, economic growth over a 25-year span. And once production starts, 
the oil field is expected to end Uganda a whopping $6.9 billion at current crude prices over the entire lifetime of the resource. Do you see that Uganda is about to make a leap? Now let's continue. On the environmental issues, the EU scrutiny of this oil pipeline project has sparked controversy due to environmental concerns, particularly deforestation. That has sparked tensions between Tanzania, Uganda, and the environmental groups. In 2022, global protests pressured Standard Bank, SMBC, and Standard Chartered against ECOP sponsorship. That is the pipeline project. The project will displace more than 100,000 persons, has caused food insecurity, and is likely to have devastating environmental effects. It will produce vast amounts of carbon dioxide. However, the project owners submitted that the construction and operation contributed only 1.8% of the full emissions of the project when taking into contact overseas transportation, refining, and burning of the 848 million barrels of oil by end users. However, environmentalists argue that considering the 25-year lifespan of the project and refining in Europe and China, the associated emissions would be more than double those of Uganda and Tanzania in 2020. Now, listen to this. However, some African countries, Uganda and Tanzania inclusive, argue that they have the right to use fossil fuels to grow their economies as rich Western nations have already done. In September, EU lawmakers called for ECOP to be stopped, prompting Uganda's president, Yoweri Museveni, to respond, they are insufferable, so shallow, so egocentric, so wrong. These are not my words. It's Yoweri Yoweri Museveni. Also, in a letter to Human Rights Watch, Total Energies, which is of French origin, stated that they continue to pay close attention to respecting the rights of the communities concerned. And that compensation offered was in accordance with IFC standard. And as to the emission, Total Energy said that as a pipeline project, ECOP is neither the legal owner of the oil, nor is it the ultimate end user. He said environmental assessments followed national regulations and that an updated analysis, including only oil use, have been performed. Now, my question is this. Do you think that African nations have the right to use fossil fuels to grow their economies as rich Western nations have done already and are still doing probably? Let the debate start in the comments. This is where we bring this to an end. Uganda is about to join oil-rich nations. They are waiting for the petrol dollars, and Yoweri Museveni cannot wait. Please kindly like this video, share it to your friends, families, and subscribe to our channel so that you will get these kinds of updates as many times as possible. Thank you for watching this video. Enjoy your day.